We asked people with learning disabilities in Scotland about their experiences of health and healthcare. Uh, I'm uh, Brian Rosie, I uh, uh, have uh, learning difficulties. I'm uh, Christine McAvoy. I'm James McNabb. Uh, my name's Kim, um, I'm 25, I'm from Glasgow. Well, I'm Brian, I've got two boys. My name's Fiona Wallace. My name is Margaret Cassidy. We started by asking people to tell us a little bit about their health. Uh, have a, a arthritis and I have, I have gout a, just in the last couple of years and also that a, I'm partially sated. Uh, well, it's very hard to stay healthy, you know, because my legs, yeah, I can't walk about that much. So most of the things I'm sitting down and not doing. Yeah. So I don't stay that healthy. A year past January, I was diagnosed with chronic lung disease or something. But I'd had chest infections before then. I've also had diabetes for about 20 years. And at the moment, I'm still mucking about with my medication. Had a boogie. Nick. People told us about positive experiences related to their health. Good communication seemed key. Well, I'm not the only one for going to doctors unless I'm major unwell. I think it sounds weird, but I think now that he's found out that I have learning difficulties, my, the way I get treated is totally different to the way I got treated before. As in, it's a lot better, it's more, it was sort of more considerate, I think, to like rather than just say, right, you're an overactive parent or whatever, and, that, and sort of chase you at the door, they're more inclined to talk to you and what have you, and not just sort of dismiss you. Because of my sight, that they, when I make an appointment, that they um, write um, my point in, uh, in writing big, because usually they uh, print off on a, a wee small, um, a label uh, and um, so I said to them I won't be able to see that so um, would there be any chance of putting on an bit paper and writing it big so I can see. I think I find uh, the, the practice that I've um, been at they've been very helpful and they're um, very understanding. Well she, she listens to you, she takes her time and she doesn't rush you. Yeah, because well, a lot of doctors usually end up rushing you, they put, drag you in and push you. Yeah, so I like to this one because she actually sits and listens to you. Yeah, and she keeps and she takes interest in what you're saying. Yeah, I always have a good experience with my GP. Um, I've been with the same, same doctor since I was 13. So I have a good, really good experience with them. Um, yeah, like they just give me like easy read information, like if I need any, um, could they have that available? And they know this well because I'm not a strong leader, they kind of help me with that too. Um, but like in doctors, they were really good because they took me off my antidepressant now. And that was a really good experience because now that's me happy. So that's a good experience because they explained it all to me, they got me down first as well, so they never took me off it straight away. We just it each time, and um, yes, that was really good. People also told us about some negative experiences. I went one morning to the opticians for my eye test, and it, he says to me, you, and, and both your eyes, you have a dot. And that's all he said. He says, I'll, I'll see you in a year's time. GP to my doctor, and from my doctor, back to my GP to get more information, then back to my <laughs> doctor, and then from there to the hospitals, back and forward, getting chucked about. And months went by, I uh, got a letter in the post, tell me where to go, and I was... I wasn't very dead sure because I'm not very good at reading. And I took up to a friend and she says, it's, you've got to do Fairman. 
I'll take you in a car. This one, this older woman looked at the eye and she said, uh, she said got, she's got a cataracts. If they just tell me straight out what, what it really, really was. So then you've got a cataracts. But all the, all, all, all the electrician said was, you've got a dot, a large dot. Well, when I had my, my oldest one, I got like a midwife and I didn't find the midwife with the first one was uh, very good. It was, she made me feel sort of like I was a bad parent if I asked about something. It was like I should automatically know these things, which it was my first child and so I didn't know sort of how to make up bottles and how you're supposed to bath them and I didn't have any of the antenatal classes as well. They didn't have any like easy read stuff and uh, which I'd have been brilliant if they did. And uh, it was just a case of this big encyclopedia. And uh, there you go. So it just goes, I, they just sort of gave me it. And if I'm honest, it just went on the shelf. And the last thing I want when I've got a new baby that I don't know what to do with is feeling nervous about asking things. And uh, I fell it no, I can't get up. To the, the bed, and, and I went to the, the doctor for a checkup, and they they look at it, and 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 they sent sent back home again with with pills. Yeah, it's awful. It's, I'm thinking awful you sent me away. And I need to come back. The daughter said, you get me, get, get me a H.A. And um, he gave me a punch on my, my leg. Yeah, I was in hospital for three years. Um, yeah, but I was meant to get out nine months before that, but I didn't get out. Um, so I, I didn't actually get out on 8th of February 2016, but I was meant to get out on 8th of February 2015. Yeah, because I was independent before I went into hospital and see when I went out, I didn't know how to cook or nothing. Like, my skull sport disappeared. Um, yeah, so I think it would be so much better if they actually took their time to keep the skulls going, if that person's got any, and just keep it good. The interactions of different medications also affected health. And then I discovered that it was a plan between the DP and the hospital that I was going to come on my steroids and see how I managed. But he hadn't explained, he hadn't explained that to me. Or I'll take you off, straight off your steroids. And within 10 days, I've been taken straight off my steroids. I was back in the hospital again. So I'm actually quite scared of stopping them again. I usually do manage it well, yeah. but when I get infections, right. they have my steroids, see, and that starts to affect. And that starts to affect other things, right. like like, like my diabetes. People told us about lots of different experiences and the things that helped them to stay healthy. The thing is, I'm not very good at reading all I say, so I've got a help with me all the time. And I've got to go through them. Because sometimes I don't, I, you know, I can't understand what people are saying in this. Yeah. So I use my help to help me to understand. Well, I think it's important to have somebody with you because it makes it easier for you 
right? Because then you, you don't have to worry about it. She's talking about me, what you've got to say to the person, because you help us there to see it. Right? And they help you to um, tell you what they're saying, the doctors and that. So it makes it a lot easier. Because yeah. when you go for medical that, sometimes you don't care what the person's saying. Or it's language you can't understand. Yeah. So your helper tells you what's what. But if you get the wrong worker, because uh, the help I've been getting just so far, they've been sending the wrong people. Yeah. Because they get been getting people who doesn't even read your mail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All I just do is take the head up the house and leave. And uh, and that's not good because I missed my eye appo- uh, appointment because I didn't even know I had an eye appointment. If I get a letter from the hospital or medical appointment, I've got to wait till somebody reads it to me. Now it's only once a week. Anything important that comes, it's got to wait yeah, to get for my helper to read. I think I find uh, the the practice that I've um, been at they've been very helpful. And they're um, very understanding, and if there's I'm not sure, and I speak to uh, my support worker in the complex, um, and they can either have a discussion uh, with the doctor. I've got hearing aids, so sometimes it's difficult to hear or to make sense of what I'm being told. So if there's two people there, like my support worker, I get on better. Above all, people wanted to be involved in decisions about their health and treated with respect. So it's about um, communication. You talking to me, no, my pee. They see the chair, no, the pet. Dependence. Somebody who listens to me, to me, taking the time out to listen to me as a person. Not just thinking, oh, she's got a learning difficulty. She's not going to understand what's going on. I want to know. People also said that adjustments to the way they received their health care was really important. No, I got a blister pack. Uh, that's the way uh, all your medicines are in one tray and uh, you just punch the back of it and you to get your tablets. Uh, so, and it's already sorted out for you, like your breakfast, tea, lunch and bedtime. So all that's sorted out. They keep an eye on my feet, my eyes, get my eyes tested. A hospital plan would be like a booklet that you would carry with you at all times. And it would have in it medication, what, what medication you on, what to do if I take not well, like a low blood sugar, or even when it goes the other way, when it goes high, it would have my condition in it, which I can't remember the name of. It's a, this is important because it's about me and it's about my body. And it's about making life easier for everybody. We would like to thank everybody who took part in these interviews. And here is a final message from Brian. Well, um, I'd like to thank yourselves for uh, inviting me um, uh, to give you some experience what I've had. and. Uh, Hopefully that will be quite useful for your project and I hope you can improve uh, some services. (laughs)